Espera. ¿Desayunaste? Sí, pan tostado. ¿Te ves lista para el examen? Sí. Sé que lo vas a hacer bien. Te quiero. Yeah, you ready for bed? Yeah. All right. Everything okay? Uh, everything's fine. Oh, this is a mess over here. You're normally more organized than that. There's just a, uh, I'm nervous for a, a big test that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I also have to present my art, so. Is this um about Elizabeth? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. You would let me know? Mm-hmm. All right, well, if you have a big test tomorrow, then you need to get to sleep. Okay, I love you. I love you too. doing? I'm just trying to get to class. We won't walk this way again. Sebastián, ¿qué tal? Bien, amigo. Busco una bolsa. Adelante. Ese está hermoso, me gusta. Es muy especial. 200. Te la llevo. De acuerdo. Gracias. Elizabeth, here, it's this. It's a, it's a gift my dad gave you. Then why are you giving it to me? It helps me when I'm hurting. I thought you might like it. How'd you know I was hurting? 
just by the way you're acting. Thank you. Yeah. What a unique time to be alive. I remember doTERRA's first convention. It was October 2008 we had about 350 people gathered together in a conference room at the Little America Hotel in Salt Lake City, Utah. It felt so big. Eight short years later, we had become the largest single company convention in the state of Utah with over 30,000 attendees and thousands more joining us through live stream. One of my favorite parts of convention is interacting with each of you. I love to hear your stories, and experience the passion you have for the pure gifts of the earth. As circumstances prevent that this year, I'm grateful for the uniting power of technology. This year, more members of the doTERRA family than ever before are able to connect with us. Thank you for being here. This year has been one of uncertainty for so many of us. In addition to a global pandemic, the world has seen natural disasters, major events canceled, civil unrest, and that's in addition to your unique personal challenges that stretch far beyond this moment. At times, fear and discouragement threaten to overtake us, but I want you to remember this. You are not alone. Together, we can be an influence for good in a world of uncertainty. So reach out to each other, let your light shine, support each other, give, even when it seems hard. You have something so beautiful to offer the world. I promise that when we focus on others, we will experience an added measure of hope and joy in our own lives. Now, I want to focus a moment on purity. Yesterday, we talked about pursuing pure product. doTERRA would not exist without pure product. But doTERRA is also so much more than an essential oils company. Our mission is to empower through purity, pure products, pure business practices, pure intention, and the pure love of humanity. Pursuing pure business practices means doing things the right way, which is often the hard way. The business world is fast paced and can be fiercely competitive, but that does not mean we have to sacrifice standards to be successful. Before we founded doTERRA, Dave, Dr. Hill, the other founders and I found ourselves in a position where we believed in the power of essential oils, but were unable to find a company we could stand behind. That's why doTERRA was born. As we began integrating ourselves into the sourcing process, we realized that the global supply chain was rife with corruption. Rather than contributing to the problem, we determined that doTERRA would be the solution. The pursuit of purity means sourcing the best and helping the most. We began by partnering directly with farmers, investing in their families and livelihoods. Today, we support 300,892 jobs through our sourcing efforts, which, including family members, impacts 1,166,000 409 lives. Through social impact, the total number of lives impacted through doTERRA sourcing efforts is 1,652,525. That gives me chills. Having spent time with these amazing people and knowing how their lives are being changed for generations to come. Early on in this process, we were introduced to a family of fourth generation distillation experts in Oregon we're proud to still be partnered with today, it was on a trip to visit them that I found myself standing in a peppermint field and was introduced to another family 
of peppermint growers who pride themselves on growing and distilling the world's most pure therapeutic quality of peppermint. This relationship became invaluable as we needed more pure peppermint to keep up with the growth of doTERRA. So as I stand in these peppermint fields over the years, I get emotional thinking about what it represents. It represents connection, connection to the earth, connection to the hands that plant, nurture, harvest, and distill these aromatic plants for our benefit, and connection to the doTERRA family that represent nearly 8 million families around the globe. Every farmer we partner with matters to us. Just as each of you matter to us, we are family. Part of the pursuit of purity is putting people first. We must never let our goals become more important than empowering others. Nothing brings me more joy than seeing you, our wellness advocates, become advocates of change through our product and our purpose. So let's continue to pursue together as we provide people with opportunities to grow and reach their full potential, we become more than we ever could on our own. Together, we keep the pursuit of purity moving upward and forward. And now, it's time for me to introduce this morning's host, Shannon Bible. I love this woman. We work very closely with one another and she has become a person I can rely on. As Vice President of Global Leadership Services, she has put together a team and initiatives that celebrate the efforts of our wellness advocates around the globe. She also oversees the team who supports those engaged in the doTERRA business. Shannon is one of the most loved people at doTERRA. She is as intelligent as she is kind. I am grateful for her vision, her passion, her dedication, and her loyal commitment to pursuing what's pure. Good morning. Whether you're new to doTERRA or whether you've been with us for a while, you know doTERRA is committed to bringing you pure product. We're also committed to an ethical and pure business model. Our business model helps empower people on both sides of the bottle by sourcing only the best for you and helping the most along the way. We're gonna cover a lot of ground today. We'll take you on a journey to learn more about the great lengths doTERRA goes to to ensure that we are always sourcing the most pure products the right way. We'll talk with a few of our partners and show you how doTERRA is making a difference in the lives of hundreds of thousands of farmers, harvesters, and distillers in more than 45 countries. Let's get started with a look at what pursuing pure business practices really means. You learn a lot about a company by how they do their business, how they produce their product, how they treat their partners, how they honor their commitments. They do what's right. Do they go the extra mile? What if the extra mile was no longer thought of as an extra mile? It was just the next step. That's when a business objective partners with the human desire to help others, develop communities, and build individuals. It's not about providing a job today. It's about unlocking a door for tomorrow. So we focus on the farmer first. If business isn't good for them, how can it ever be good for us? We believe sourcing the best and helping the most go hand in hand. And it's the pursuit of both equally that makes us who we are. doTERRA's ethical sourcing strives to empower those who grow the plants these oils come from, no matter the cost. That means when you buy an oil from doTERRA, you're not only getting an extraordinary product, but your purchase also directly impacts lives all around the world. The farmers, the harvesters, the distillers, as well as those who transport, bottle, and finally deliver those oils to your doorstep. Now that is power packed into a small bottle. I'm sure you've heard this many times before, our mission is to change the world one drop, one person, and one community at a time. 
It really is our passion and is at the core of everything we do at doTERRA. At doTERRA, we don't buy farms, we build farmers. What's in this bottle? I say love. You see, in Nepal, living is hard and opportunities are scarce, especially after the terrible earthquake. For years, I was unemployed. My family of five lived in a one-room hut with a tin roof. But then doTERRA welcomed me as a harvester and lifted my entire family out of poverty. Each morning when my children are sleeping, I collect beautiful wintergreen leaves for which doTERRA guarantees a fair market price. What's more, through doTERRA's co-impact sourcing initiative, my loved ones have hope. My children are now in school thanks to donated uniforms. My husband's business is growing thanks to help opening a shop. We've even been able to secure our own land thanks to their help. And most beautiful of all, on that land, doTERRA helped construct a new earthquake resilient home. I never dreamed we'd call a house like this home. But this story isn't unique to us. doTERRA is empowering our entire community. We all feel safer after doTERRA funded the construction of a new modernized hospital and renovated our earthquake damaged schools. And we all feel more self-sufficient after doTERRA opened a lab to teach sustainable agriculture practices to students and farmers alike. This remarkable journey of love doesn't end here. Each morning, I take the wintergreen leaves to doTERRA's community distillation unit. The site responsibly employs local artisan distillers who carefully capture wintergreen's natural therapeutic properties. Then the precious oil makes its way to doTERRA's state-of-the-art lab, where scientists apply the most advanced tests to ensure the oil's purity and potency. doTERRA has even partnered with over 100 research university and medical facilities to find the best applications of essential oils. Ultimately, doTERRA does this all because it cares about your family as much as it cares about mine. What's in this bottle? I say love. As a company, our sourcing goals have been to always provide the best quality essential oils while helping the greatest number of people possible. I'm proud to say that we've been able to do both. And even though this has not always made things easy for us, it has ensured that we can do things the right way, which is to source the best and help the most. And this is exactly what I wanna to talk to you about today. Some essential oil companies choose to own and operate their own farms or even claim to own and operate their own farms. But most companies purchase essential oils from brokers and middlemen. However, neither approach is ideal. At doTERRA, we have created an entirely new system, one that has the capacity to truly empower thousands of small-scale farmers around the globe and provide a sustainable long-term supply of the purest and most potent essential oils in the world. Our sourcing model is truly unique. And more importantly, it's working and making a significant impact for good for hundreds of thousands of people. As the largest essential oil company in the world, you might imagine we need a vast amount of oil to fulfill our needs for doTERRA certified pure therapeutic grade essential oils. Lavender, for example, is one of our most popular oils. Let's look at some numbers related to lavender. If we were to source our lavender in the most efficient, easiest, and cheapest way possible, which would be basically building a massive commercial farm in a cheap part of the world, we'd need nearly 3,000 acres of commercial farmland for this one crop. 3,000 acres! That's an enormous farm, especially for lavender. To run it, we'd honestly only need about three to five full-time employees. That's not many jobs supported, and logistically, it would actually be pretty easy for us to manage at our size. But that's just not who we are and what we're about. Profits, saving money, and cutting out small-scale, often multi-generational farmers is just not what drives and motivates us. People do. Helping the most does. So what does our lavender sourcing look like then? 
our lavender, which is always 100% pure, unlike what people buy from retail and online stores, comes from several locations around the world, including, of course, Bulgaria. Instead of having a, a couple giant commercial farms, we choose to partner with existing small-scale farmers, most of whom have had these family farms for several generations and have struggled to continue to sustain their families through farming on a small scale. But working with doTERRA, they can now sustain their family needs. In Bulgaria, the average size farm for one of these small scale lavender farmers is around 10 acres. In Bulgaria alone, we partner with more than 150 small scale farmers. In total, the number of small scale farmers we partner with around the world to cover all of our annual lavender needs is nearly 350 farmers for just this one oil. Imagine how much effort and time it requires to coordinate, organize, and support hundreds of small-scale farmers and distillers in multiple countries just for lavender. Not only that, but we have to ensure and confirm that every single batch of lavender we, we receive from all these farmers meets our strict, certified, pure, therapeutic grade quality standards. And lavenders, just one of over 170 different oils that our sourcing team works so hard to supply the company with. Why would we take on such a feat? Why would we go to such great lengths to source lavender this way? It may make perfect sense to a finance guy like me to commercially farm our own lavender. It would be easier, more efficient, less expensive, and more profitable to go the commercial route. But we are far more motivated by helping and empowering people and communities than by cutting costs and maximizing profits. By partnering with just these lavender farmers, more than 1,000 lives are directly impacted. It's a similar story when it comes to peppermint. We now source our peppermint oil from multiple locations, including the Willamette Valley, as well as India. And before the morning is over, we'll show you your first glimpse into our latest adventure in the fragrant fills of Indian peppermint, which are beautiful. Our peppermint needs require over 4,000 acres of farms. That's massive. By not going the commercial route, we are able to empower more than 2,000 small-scale farmers. Working with these small-scale peppermint farmers amounts to directly impacting over 9,000 lives. Again, why do we do it this way? Because doTERRA doesn't build farms, we build farmers. We, and this includes each of you, are a company that cares. Think about how many lives are changed through these employment opportunities. Okay, one more example. As you may know, tea tree is native to Australia. We have an amazing sourcing partner in Australia that has a beautiful, larger size farm for tea tree, which many of our Aussie Diamond Club winners have visited in recent years. It's a beautiful family-owned farm that's well run. They produce amazing certified pure therapeutic grade oil. We are grateful for the partnership and proud to be offering you the oil that they produce. But as the size of doTERRA has grown and our needs for more tea tree oil have expanded, we look for a way to source tea tree through small scale farmers as well and we found the perfect area in Kenya. Why Kenya? Because we source the best and help the most. We've invested significant time and resources into helping small scale farmers in that region to grow and harvest crops for essential oils. We did this for several reasons. First being that Kenya is, has an ideal climate for growing several of the plants from which we extract essential oils. The second reason is that we have an amazing opportunity to create and sustain game-changing economic opportunities in underdeveloped communities in a region of the world that's relatively stable. Several years ago, we started to work with some growers in southern Kenya to grow tea tree. I remember one family in particular where the parents had many children and relied solely on their small two to three acre farm for their sustenance. They grew watermelons and vegetables, and they sold them in the local markets. It was always hit and miss as to what their income would be because of weather, crop quality, and even the demands of the market. When they were approached about growing tea tree for us, they were a bit skeptical, but agreed to put a one third of their farm in tea tree because of our agreement to fund the seedlings for them. 
I remember being there as the first harvest occurred and our team in Kenya helped them with the harvest. We weighed the harvest foliage and, and we paid them on the spot. They were surprised to be paid immediately and were even more amazed that the amount they received was more than four times the amount they would have received from their prior crops on that land. They were excited to be able to fully fund the schooling needs of their children in advance with excess money available for their other needs. It's the first time they had ever been able to do that and all forever remember the smile on their faces. It was, it was priceless. Well, today, they have all of their available land planted in tea tree, and their neighbors are wanting to do the same. In Kenya and other regions around the world, the farmers that we work with have an income opportunity that simply just didn't exist before. They can participate with their family and friends in an industry that was previously unavailable to them with a partner that is honest and fair. We pay our farmers directly. We don't work with metalmen. We make it a point to pay them on time and to pay them fairly. This opportunity provides them with economic security that has not been possible for generations. The adults, the mothers and the fathers, they're earning enough that their children no longer have to work by their side, but can attend school. Think about that for a moment. Recently, many of us have come to understand the luxury that sending your children to school can be. And, and finally, in these farmers' lives, they're earning enough money for their children to go to school. In some cases, completing kindergarten through 12th grade for the first time in their family's history. This is an opportunity that has the power to create ripples of change, change that we're fortunate to be part of. The number of new tea tree farmer partnerships we have in Kenya is over 550 today, and it's growing quickly. These micro tea tree farms are, are an average of only one fourth of an acre. Could we have easily sourced this amount in Australia or elsewhere? Yeah, of course, we could have but the income generated by these small scale farms for these families in Kenya is transformative. Nearly 2,000 lives are directly impacted by these 550 farmers. 2,000 lives that are changed forever. Sourcing essential oils this way has been difficult. It's presented complex problems, creating more work for our global sourcing team and for many of us at the corporate office. But when we look in the eyes of the children or the parents who are benefiting from this, we always know that it's absolutely 100% worth it. We didn't set out to find the easiest way to source essential oils. We set out to find the best way and the right way to source essential oils. Our sourcing goal is to empower as many farmers as we can around the world, while also empowering you with pure essential oils that make a difference in your lives. We do everything we can to make sure the hundreds of thousands of small scale farmers and harvesters around the world that we work with are also empowered by our partnership. doTERRA does not and never will cut corners. We are absolutely committed to purity and potency, but also in empowering small scale farmers to bring you the highest quality essential oils our beautiful and amazing earth has to offer. We source the best, and help the most. We hope you feel great pride in working with doTERRA because the work you do is truly changing the world. Wow, it is amazing to see how many small scale farmers doTERRA directly supports. It makes me proud to be part of such a caring organization. I hope you feel that way too. As a company, we're always looking for ways we can have a greater impact on the farmers and communities we partner with. We call this effort co-impact sourcing. And when we say source the best and help the most, that is what we're talking about. In 2014, Emily Wright and Tim Valentiner took a trip to Haiti to visit a potential sourcing partner and some of the farmers they work with. The experiences they had and the relationships they formed on this trip forever transformed doTERRA's sourcing philosophy. And that was the beginning of what has now become known as co-impact sourcing. So I went to Haiti it was with the intent of getting an exclusive contract on a better quality that we had never seen before. 
one of our goals is to source the, the highest quality plants which produce the highest quality essential oils. And that led us to Haiti and, and sourcing better oil. But when we arrived, our perspective completely changed. <laughs> When we went on this trip to Haiti, it was learning about the growing area, meeting with the distiller that we were looking to partner with. Um, but then a huge priority for us was visiting the actual production areas, going and sitting with the farmers themselves. So as we sat down with these community leaders in this little grass hut, and they grabbed their little megaphone, and they started talking to us about their hopes and their dreams and what they wanted to accomplish. And I remember one particular individual saying, I have a dream that someday we'll have access to clean water that won't make my family sick. And then it hit me. All of the people that I'd seen going up and down that rocky road were carrying these vegetable jugs, going down into the closest town to collect water that wasn't even potable. They would have to carry it on top of their head or in their arms, or some of them were fortunate enough to have a donkey. Three hours round trip every single day. Through these conversations that we began to have, we said, we have to start sourcing differently. It can't just be about the oil and getting the best quality oil that we can find. It has to be about lifting the people that are planting and harvesting and distilling these precious oils. If we take care of them, their pride is going to flow into the oil and they're going to take care of us and ensuring that we have the very best quality of such oil that we could possibly imagine. This first trip to Haiti was the genesis of trying to identify how can we do that more effectively? How can we source the best, but also truly help the most? So Haiti is really what gave us the vision for corn pot sourcing. But now we get the opportunity to go around the world. We source our oils from over 40 countries. Most of them are developing countries. In our pursuit of purity, it's not only about pursuing the purest product, but doing so in a way where we can have pure business practices and intentions as well by sourcing the very best and helping the most as we do so. So that trip changed everything for us, didn't it? We, yeah, we went just we to find- Yeah, no idea what it was gonna lead to. Just to find vetiver, to, to vet out our partner and Boom, Every, everything changed and Compact Sourcing was born. And we've never looked back since. Yeah, it, I had only been with doTERRA for about you know, four or five months at that point. And uh, when, once we learned about this oil, wanted to go on the ground, work you know, to see where the, where the plants were being harvested, how the farmers were organized, and really understand more about the oil and the distillation process. That was the original objective, but then once we got to the community in the area, it opened up a whole world of there's so much that can be done here to link social impact and our humanitarian work with Healing Hands directly in the communities where we're sourcing. Right. Completely changed our perspective. Yeah. And I, I have to hold this up. This is actually that bottle, the that, sample that started all of this. That first trip. This, the first oil that sample we received and thought we've got to go see where this is coming from and meet the partners and the farmers. and Right. So a lot has come from this bottle. It's a pretty, <laughs> pretty special trip. So now we're really excited to be joined by our sourcing partner, George Lee, straight from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. So, hey, George, so excited that you could join us today. 
Okay, it's a pleasure to be with you, Emily and Tim. And like always, every year, it's always a pleasure when I come to Utah to be with the family, the Dodera family, and to talk about the good things that Dodera is doing down in Haiti in 2014 when you came. It's changed the life of many, many, many people. I remember you and I having this experience, as, the, as one of the committee members said, I have a dream of having access to clean water that won't make my family sick. And it was this moment that changed everything for all three of us. I had no idea that my people in 2014 didn't have access to water. Myself, when I saw those things, it was like, it's like, um, I don't know how to explain because my heart was like, you know, uh, I don't know how to say that in English, but this year, that means okay. it, it's like something was pulling on my heart. So when I met you, and especially that day that we were together at Cetilaire, I said to myself, George, we have to do something because you have a company that have people in it that you, you have been talking to that wanted to help. And I think that's the best way, you know, because each, each community has their own needs. That's how myself, I feel about it. Even if I travel after 15 days or 20 days, the most, most I want to come back. When I think about what the work that we do in Haiti, how we help people and how those people help us also. You know, I think I have to go and give whatever I can back to them, you know, and this is why I'm probably, you know, here, but separate, being separated with my kids and my wife, it's another chapter that I don't know for how long, because now I can't even go to Canada because only resident and uh, Canadian national can travel to Canada. So I've seen them since December. I don't know when. George, your commitment to your country is, is so inspirational and your passion for helping those communities. I remember when the hurricane came through and we were so concerned about you and so concerned about our harvesters. We wanted to make sure they were okay. And what impressed us so much about you, George, is that you knew each and every one of them by name. You had them listed. You knew who your harvesters were. You knew who their family members were. And you went and made sure every single home was okay. And we were able to work with you to provide the supplies to make sure their, their homes were rebuilt but it touched us so deeply that you knew them all by name and you made sure they were all okay. And that is the heart of George Ali, the person that makes sure doTERRA has the best vetiver in the world, is you make sure every single person is taken care of. And that's why you stay in Haiti and we love you so much for it. Thank you very much, I appreciate it, especially coming from both of you, you know, and like I told you, I spend more time with them than with my family. So they are part of my family. So you can tell. Uh, yes. And uh, what, what I like is like, they make my life change to, for a better life. And we make them change their life too. You know, so it's like, you give me this, I take this, I give you this, and you give me back this. So it's like a chain. I always like to mention that it's like a motorcycle chain or a bicycle chain, you know? The chain doesn't work unless all the pieces are connected and working together. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's for me, a, a way of life that is probably different than life in America, you know, but definitely once you get attached to a country like Haiti, it's very difficult to 
to forget about it, you know? I, and, will, uh, I will never forget the feeling that I had in Haiti. And I, I agree with what you say is you can't go to Haiti and, and not have it hold a piece of your heart. And Haiti exactly. definitely has our heart. Thank you so yeah. much for what you do, George. We are so very grateful. And thank you for giving us your time today to be part of this event. We thank love you, you George. George, and it will always be a pleasure to have to do things in life with you guys. George, we, I wanted to mention that this convention, Connection, is obviously a unique year, but you are, you and Marcel, your partner, are the only ones that have been to every single convention since 2014. So we didn't want to make it any different this year. So thank you for connecting and being with us anyway, despite the circumstances. And we can't wait to see you again soon uh, and even before next year as well. Thank you. And also, I want to thank my partner, Marcel, you know, for giving me the strength also to do whatever I do, I do here. Because we are, as a team, we are connected, you know? Yes. And having you guys connected with us can make us do better things for the people of Haiti. Absolutely. And we look forward to what more we can do in the future together. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. Much love Thank to you. you. It was a pleasure, and will always be a pleasure to be part of the convention. <laughs> Thank you. It's online. We, we love you so much. I love you too, very much. Team, <laughs> love you. We'll see you me. soon. Bye-bye. So in June 2014, we wanted to bring our top wellness advocates to Haiti. It was a pretty amazing experience as we turned the water on for the very first time. And it, it was, it actually became what's now turned into many sourcing trips to multiple locations around the world. But this was really the was first, first one. sourcing trip ever of being able to bring wellness advocates on the ground to a sourcing area and see it all firsthand. Right. So this was right. the first of yes. what's now become commonplace throughout the world. Exactly. So we wanted to bring in some of our top wellness advocates who are with us on that trip so that you can hear their experience and to know and how it changed their perspective. So thank you, Wes Hobson, Tammy Stevens, for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. Thank you for having us. It's awesome to be here. Yeah. It's good to see your faces. We wish we were in person, but this is the second best thing. <laughs> yes. So Wes, I would love to know how that first sourcing trip to Haiti changed your perspective towards doTERRA. Well, I mean, it was a huge impact, not only how the business was with doTERRA and doTERRA was itself, but actually with my life. Um, I was a pro triathlete for 12 years, and I used to do the World Cup circuit, and I raced in over 25 countries. And a lot of those countries would be in developing countries and third world countries because the tourism board would have us go there and promote their country. But I'd always be there, I'd do the race, and then I'd leave and go on to a different race. And what doTERRA made me do was for three or four days, stop and see what is happening in these countries and these countries that are, that are so poor and impoverished. And it made me open my eyes that, oh my gosh, there is a need here. And seeing what doTERRA was doing to try to solve as much as possible the, the hardships that these people have was just truly incredible. And for me, it was is definitely a life changing moment. It's hard to believe that it was seven years ago <laughs> that we did that because it still is embedded in my mind as far as um, the impact that it's had on my life. I I love hearing that perspective from you. Were there were there any harvesters that you connected with on that trip in particular? On the second day, we actually went to where we harvest, and we had been in these four wheel drive trucks for a couple hours driving to that point. And we're going up these bumpy roads and everything. And I was just getting really annoyed because it was going so slow because the roads were so rough. So then we get to where we harvest. And maybe I'll get into that a little bit later as far as the harvesting itself. But after the harvesting, we're going to the community area where they're going to do a welcoming ceremony for us. 
And I said to myself, I am not getting in that SUV again. I don't care. So without asking anyone, I just started running. <laughs> because there's only one road. There's only one road up this hill and over. I'm like, I think I'll find the school. So I started running. Within a minute of starting this run, and here I am in running shoes, my running shorts. I did have a t-shirt on, Emily. I wasn't trying to impress anyone. But it was hot. <laughs> it was hot and humid. But anyway, within a minute of this run, this Haitian comes out of his shed and goes, hey, 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 and just starts running next to me. And here we are running together. We don't know the language. We're giving thumb signals of too fast, too slow. He's like, no, 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 okay, okay, okay. This guy, keep in mind, Haiti is what, 80 degrees, 85 with that much humidity. This guy is wearing Keds, jeans, and a long sleeve black shirt. And he's running with me and we're not running slowly. We're probably running like eight minute pace. But it was such an impression for me, for someone just so willing to come out and just say, hey, I want to run with you, brother. And I want to run with you to the community center where we're going to have this welcoming thing. And he's one of the, the local harvesters. He's probably like 18 years old. But along the way, all the other Haitians would say, oh, gringo, gringos, we're running together and all this fun stuff. But <laughs> we just had the greatest time. And then after the welcoming ceremony, he stayed around me and after the welcoming ceremony we decided to run back <laughs> so we're running back the two of us once the suv started and we ended up making probably the only wrong turn possible and we went down this really steep hill and then all of a sudden the suv cars start honking and stuff telling me to come back and i look at him he looks at me i say you ready to go up he goes no 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 <laughs> so he was done i'm like what can i give this guy to remember this moment and we didn't have much so i gave him actually my doTERRA hat as a memory but for me, it's one of those things where here you are, you can take this moment and there's language barriers, there's economical differences, and yet doTERRA was able to take us and put us together. Tammy, um, you were also there on the trip and like Emily mentioned in the beginning, this was a relatively small group compared to what presidential diamond uh, trips are now, but this was the first where we were able to take a group of our top leaders to a sourcing location. Um, what what was most meaningful for you on this particular trip? What what stood out, and and you know how has it helped form or change your perspective in terms of what DoTerra is all about? Well, many things, of course, but one of the things is actually you, Tim. Um, Jim and I actually visited with you quite a bit, and the impact that that had on us. Not only what you were doing there, but in other places, and kind of that bigger picture of the whole idea of co-impact sourcing, it just impacted me so much how we all play a role and that we all work together and one person isn't more important than the other that we can't even do what we do if it wasn't for those people over there and um, what doTERRA and, and you and, and your team of people have done. And it just, these villages all across the world, not even just in Haiti, but that they're empowering those people to be leaders in their communities so that they can have a better way of life. And, and you could tell they were excited about this. They were excited about you. They were excited about us and what was happening and the vetiver and, and of course the school and, and the water and um, what a contrast that when you choose to take your influence and, and your energy and you focus on a group of people, how you can bring them hope. And so, um, Yes, that, that for sure ever, forever changed my life. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I certainly remember our conversations on, on the trip, and it, there's no place like being out in the field to experience this because we, we can try and relay this in videos or even in brochures or online, but it, there really is no other way to fully understand or see other than being there in person and experiencing it and seeing the people that are making this happen. And I love what you said of that this is really connecting a full chain that, that you know, wellness advocates and, and consumers and people that are using these precious essential oils, being able to look all the way back to where they're actually coming from, who's farming the raw materials, how are they being distilled and the whole process. It, it takes all of us involved to make this happen. It can't happen without the production and it can't happen without people to understand how precious and important these resources and these essential oils are 
and how they need to be used. And this is the magic of trying to bring that together. And there's so much need, uh, especially in Haiti, uh, but there's so much potential of, for good of impact that we can have because of that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it feels just so easy, doesn't it, to open that bottle and, and until, like you said, that you're there. And if anybody has a chance to go on a, a, a co-impact sourcing trip, I so recommend that you do it because it's, it's just different when you can see and smell and touch and, you know, you're digging up those roots and you're seeing them, you get the dirt out of them and they're packing them down and it's just, it doesn't just happen like that. And I think that we oftentimes here think that, well, it just appeared, right? It just appeared in that bottle and, and the whole process is um, so involved and so many people are needed that that our, our piece to go out and share the oils is just really a tiny piece of impacting people's lives, but we all do our piece. We all do our piece. So when you look at vetiver, which is a grass, it's got these massive root systems where the essential oil comes from, uh, that the that the harvesters are digging up out of the ground. And we gave you the experience to harvest vetiver root for yourself. So Wes, you're a big strapping man, right? If you're, you're a pro triathlete, how easy was it for you to harvest the vetiver root? My shoulders were sore after swinging a pickaxe 10 times, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> it was not an easy, job at all you take this pickaxe and you got to hammer probably 15 to 20 times really hammer to get down to probably a foot and a half deep below the root to pull that part of the root and i believe some of those roots grow like four feet deep or something and then you take a machete after shaking all the dirt off you gotta shake all the dirt off and then you take a machete and you gotta chop off maybe i think you leave about four inches of root or five inches of root or something like that so you can replant it you got to chop off all that root and then of course you take all that root and you got to go and you put it where I think it dries for three days or something and then you put it in a truck to take it to the distillery man there's a lot of work and I remember um, having a picture taken from a bunch of vetiver that's on a truck and I think Tim you said that truck full of bales of hay will only produce one gallon of vetiver and I'm like, yeah, all of that, very low. all of that for one gallon of vetiver. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself now, whenever I have a bottle of vetiver, um, I realize the value of what it took and not just this oil, but a lot of oil. So I was very impressed. It's, it's not an easy thing with how they harvest it. So Tammy, after you were able to experience how difficult it is to harvest the vetiver root, right? And the harvesters do it day in and day out. How did it change things for you as you taught people about the benefits of essential oils? So I, um, it, it wasn't easy for me to dig one of those little roots out. And, and I think that, that what it did was, again, it just helped me to realize the, the value of each little drop um, and that there was somebody there, and I'm thinking of what the people's hands looked like that worked there. They worked in the dirt, right? And used those huge picks and, and did that. And then their hands were just um, old and leathery and um, just the work that it involved to get enough roots to pack down to then go to the next step and to squeeze out one little drop out of our bottle. It was... Um, it definitely changed yeah. it. <laughs> the value and I think how precious it is, just how precious it is and the respect of the oils. Both of you have been on many co-impact sourcing trips now since that initial one to Haiti. How have these trips changed your life? And Wes, do you want to go first? You're making me tear up <laughs> <clears throat> because I'm, I'm thinking about all those trips. I mean, one, I was able to take my 15 year old daughter at the time to Nepal to see how wintergreen is harvested. And the impact that doTERRA does, not just for the community by giving, by paying them to do the harvesting, but what doTERRA is doing with painting and sanding desks, with building, with building schools, with creating medical centers, with 
building a dam in Kenya where we separate the fresh water from the salt water so that the cattle can feed and so that they can feed the, the, the plants, the crops that are there. Um, in Bulgaria, where we have a halfway house that we're helping for teenagers that have been basically abandoned to from, from middle school. It makes me realize the value of what life is, the value of one what we have and the value of what we can give. All right, Tammy, how have you been changed through these trips? Um, I would have to say if there was one word that comes to mind, it would be trust. These people that decided to plant vetiver and to do that rather than crops that they could eat or that they knew for sure they could sell down in the city, that them taking that chance and deciding to trust has turned into far more blessing than they could ever imagine. And, and how true that is with every relationship, whether it be with our spouse or our children, our team members, our friends, people in our community, the people we're in partnership, right? Our businesses, um, that when we trust and, and take that chance, because sometimes people aren't necessarily don't, um, maybe, maybe it isn't, it doesn't turn out well, but when we do take that chance that it creates that atmosphere where really good things can happen far beyond our imaginations. And that's how I look at these villages that they didn't just get paid for their vetiver. Um, they got schools and water. And to me, what a, what a word picture that is. What a, what a picture of um, just the beauty of, of people from even different nations trusting each other and believing that as we work together and do our piece, that really good things can happen even far beyond what we expected. I wanted to add one thing, and that is we as wellness advocates have no excuse. We have no excuse um, for not enrolling people. We have no excuse not to be motivated because we see those people on the other end that are working so hard. And so when I hear people say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this, I'm just like, no, no, you can because I've seen people even work harder than what they can achieve. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Oh, thank you both for coming together and sharing your experiences with us because we couldn't do what we do for people in Haiti and all of the other countries where we source these beautiful oils from if you weren't out sharing these gifts of the earth with the world. Thank you so much, Wes and Tammy, for joining us. We're so grateful for the look back and to share those experiences that changed us all. And I just want to thank all of you for being a part of this life-changing work. Without everything that you do, we couldn't do what we do on the other side of the bottle. And we are just so proud of all of our sourcing partners around the world. So thank you all. Essential oils are everywhere. Their therapeutic benefits have led to a massive surge in popularity. You see them for sale online, in social media, on Amazon, even the grocery store shelf. But you have to ask yourself, was it ethically and sustainably sourced? With the increased popularity of essential oils, too many companies, big and small, are in the dark as to where their oils are coming from. Some even intentionally take advantage of farmers and distillers while cutting corners and padding profits. They advertise their products as 100% pure, when they truly have no visibility into who is producing the oils or how it's being done. They did, however, wrap it in a pretty label and bought some Google ad space. It's easy for a consumer to get lost in this growing marketplace. Since 2008, doTERRA has sold more than 187 million bottles of essential oils to nearly 9.8 million customers worldwide. They trust doTERRA because we only source the very best essential oils in the world. Since many plants grown for essential oils thrive in developing countries, doTERRA is committed to making sure the lives of each farmer, harvester, and distiller are better because of our partnership. We call this co-impact sourcing. Positive impact for everyone along the entire supply chain and the purest essential oils for you. Our co-impact sourcing commitment is to one, be directly involved at the source. Through this, we know the people and processes involved. Two, ensuring positive social impact, including job creation, fair labor conditions, and even community development projects. And three, environmental stewardship and sustainability. You get the highest quality and most effective essential oils, along with the knowledge that your purchase protects growers and distillers from being cheated by middlemen and large corporations. 
When you purchase a doTERRA essential oil, you can be a conscious consumer and know you are getting oils that are not only traceable, but are proven and tested to work for you and those you care about. To learn more about co-impact sourcing and our sourcing guiding principles, and to hear the stories from farmers and distillers across the globe, visit sourcetoyou.com. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. Hi, I'm Kirk Jowers, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Tim Valentiner, doTERRA Vice President of Global Strategic Sourcing, and Vishnu Adhikari, the doTERRA Director of Co-Impact Sourcing. Tim and Vishnu, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I wish we were in Nepal or Guatemala or Kenya or some other place to do this, but uh, we'll take what we can get. I'm thrilled to, to be with you today. That's right. Thank you very much. Now, Tim and Vishnu, uh, you along with the amazing sourcing team that we have here at doTERRA have really been the pioneers to bring this co-impact sourcing vision to reality. So first, tell me a little bit about your professional background before coming to doTERRA and how it prepared you to do this work. Tim, I'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about your professional background before coming to doTERRA and how it prepared you to do this work. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, thankfully to my parents, was able to grow up in a family that really prioritized and starting at a very young age, um, taking us uh, on unique experiences in, at beginning in rural Mexico to participate in village development and community, uh, community projects. Um, and so community development and poverty eradication has always kind of been a north, north star of sorts for our family and, and as translated for me, uh, personally and professionally, and I'm, I'm really so grateful for parents that really prioritize that for our family, and um, it's really guided and directed to what I've uh, tried to accomplish later on in life. Uh, living in Bolivia for two years was also a unique opportunity, living in the lowlands and highlands and uh, being able to immerse yourself in any uh, place or culture for an ex extended period of time has a profound effect. Uh, but trying to just really carry that motivation through college and into, you know, undergraduate uh, pursuits and studies and then, and then trying to do some good and make a difference in, in, you know, job and professional opportunities once school is finished. You are joined by an incredible uh, human being and um, Vishnu, tell us a little bit about, about your life and what led you to, to this spot. Hey, I don't have anything like Tim has, but <laughs> you had far more ambition. You actually legitimately had uh, far more than I do. Yeah. Uh, I grew up in a rural mountain of Nepal. Um, turned my hopes and dreams to reality by hard work and education, and of course, some uh, good luck in yeah. the way. Um, I got a scholarship to go to Russia for my civil engineering degree. Upon my return, I worked for the Nepalese government and then uh, the international development component of the US government called uh, USAID. And um, that was an incredible experience to reach out to the min many community in that uh, impo impoverished uh, country of Nepal to help uh, with projects. Um, after that, I came to California for my another master degree in Monterey. And upon completion, I went back to Nepal and worked for a nonprofit called Choice Humanitarian. Um, later, I rejoined USAID. In the meantime, I have multiple opportunities to uh, consult for the World Bank to help them implement poverty and agriculture related uh, projects. And now uh, it's a full circle to come to doTERRA with that uh, experience to be able to uh, work in the co-impact sourcing uh, program that would um, impact millions of people in many different countries. And I hope to draw from that experience and education to make it uh, uh, expanded to many sourcing locations around the world. 
earlier in this session, we learned about Haiti as a key part of the genesis for the co-impact sourcing model. How did Haiti and other sourcing initiatives that uh, around that time lead to defining what has become our sourcing guiding principles and adopting this model in other parts of the world? Tim? In terms of co-impact sourcing model development, and yeah, Haiti was such a big uh, part of that genesis. And really six years ago, when we, uh, you know, when Emily and uh, Brandon and I were able to go to Haiti, it, it really was trying to identify opportunity. And there was clearly a massive opportunity there in terms of filling a lot of the gaps of what um, a lot of good things had been started already, but we really, with our partner, but we, we saw that there was, there was opportunity to do more. And this, this helped lead to the vision of what, you know, we ultimately tried to accomplish of improving our organization of our supply chain and just how and where we got our oils and being very deliberate about that. Through this, we decided to build a framework, which, you know, now has become our sourcing guiding principles. There are eight of them and they really just help define uh, what we want our partnerships to look like. How can we better prioritize farmers? And how can we make sure that everyone's being treated fairly along the whole supply chain? Um, this is all happening through fair and on-time payments, through prepayments at times when needed, uh, through trainings, um, through investments that we can make on the ground with our partners or even you know, on our own in some cases where necessary. And ultimately just providing a commitment to the people that we're working with um, that they know that we're committed to them and that they can have the security and knowledge and, and know that they can commit to us as well. Some of my most meaningful experiences uh, in my life, and certainly with doTERRA, have been on co-impact sourcing trips. Most recently, I was in Kenya and spent a day with a man named Samuel Aguirre. He uh, has a wife, three children, and seven people work on two acres of land uh, growing geranium and tea tree. And, um, and he has two more acres he's trying to get into our system. I think he has now. Uh, Taylor reported back. and. And that's going to employ uh, yet another like four to five people. And, uh, and he talks about as we were laying our, our, our mulch, our all natural uh, mulch uh, on there about how um, just the, the on time fair payment has completely changed his life because it used to be unpredictable. He'd have to wait maybe six months. Who knows how much he'd get at the end of that. And so the ability to just plan your lives we take for granted, but um, doTERRA revolutionized that, and I'm, I'm so proud of, of you two for, for leading that charge. So talk to me about what makes doTERRA different, why it is important that we have these sourcing guiding principles and how they provide our partners with a framework and promise for pure business practices. So in terms of how and where we're sourcing, we are always focused first and foremost on purity, of course. We, we, have, to have, we have to have purity and we have to have CPTG quality wherever we're working, no matter where that is around the world. You know, that's sourcing the best, we have to. Right. Um, but we also care deeply about you know, where we're sourcing these oils, not just for the purity component, but also who can we lift and benefit along the way throughout this process, and that's where we bring in the helping the most with, you know, sourcing the best and helping the most. So at doTERRA, we're, we're very cognizant of this, of course, and want to continue to being a true leader as it relates to sustainability and fairness, um, but also ensuring that our ethos as a company is really driving and directing what we do as a company, not just what we say or market or talk about, but what we are truly meaningfully implementing throughout our supply chain and through how we act and how we treat all of our supply partners. Thank you, Tim. I would like to add a um, little more on that. Please. Um, as we talk about uh, in our definition of co-impact sourcing, there need to be shared value for uh, all throughout the supply chain where we are working around the world in now actually 45 plus countries. Uh -huh. This framework allows us to responsibly work in a uh, diverse sets of countries, including developing countries, where we can uh, empower and help more people. What was it about doTERRA that made you feel like you could do even more good coming here rather than 
uh, continuing your great work uh, that you were doing. Um, what was the attraction? What was the hook that brought you over to us? My passion to reach out to different cultures and understand their uh, motivation and challenges, how they do their business. Right. Especially in dealing with the poverty and social issues. Um, I had enough experience in the country of Nepal and I wanted to uh, replicate those examples around the world and doTERRA give me a perfect venue for this. As we are an agriculture-based company and many of the poor around the world uh, depend on agriculture and it's, it's a perfect venue for them to start growing new uh, crops that they have a, a fixed market uh, with doTERRA. So it's a business solution to the poverty. Well, and, and President Obama's top, uh, top person in Africa said something that really hit me at the time. And again, I'd never even heard of doTERRA when I heard her speech, but she said one, $1 of, of money earned by someone in Africa was, was worth at least $5 given by a nonprofit. And that really took a while for me to understand it. But I've, thanks to you and Tim, I'm starting to figure it out a little bit more. And so let me, let me jump back into how exactly do these sourcing guiding principles work in practice? Why is this a solution to end poverty? Well, to, um, tying into that and what you just mentioned, but uh, and together with you know, Bishnu's comment on that so much of the world are farmers and they need agricultural opportunities to step forward. But, so the small farmer family you met in Kenya is a perfect example of this. They have you know, two acre, four acres of land. Right. They've probably been growing corn, maize, uh, maybe some other types of cassava or some other just staple crops to eat right. for, for generations. And they are maintaining and staying at their, their poverty level because it's subsistence. It's subsistence and yeah. they have very little access, if any, to sell their products in the market. What we're able to provide through you know, our sourcing efforts, what doTERRA can provide is by teaching and training these farmers that continue to grow some subsistence crops, but we're going to give you seedlings. We're going to give you tools through mobile apps. We're going to bring trainers, field officers that are coming, coming to visit you regularly, and we're going to teach you how to grow this crop called geranium. You can't eat it, so it's a risk for them to, to pull out the crops they can eat and survive on to grow a crop that they can't eat. Right. And there's, because of this, there's usually a very, you know, there's hesitancy, there's reluctancy to, to, to partner, to, to go down this route. But um, like you saw, when they do this and the first time they sell the geranium to, you know, the collectors that we work with that, will, that are from the distillery that come and help them harvest it at the right time and they cut it and they weigh it and they receive a payment on their mobile phone, that day or the next day, they are very eager to start planting the rest of their fields, right. their other two acres, to geranium or tea tree or other crops because this is often the first time ever in their lives in many generations that they are receiving, you know, they're, they're planting a cash crop and not just any cash crop, a value-added agricultural crop that's leading to a product where we can afford to pay them a very fair price and much more than they would make by growing subsistence crops and trying to sell them in the local markets, along with the 10 or 100,000 other neighbors who right. are doing the exact same thing. And, and to your point, this guy has gone from a dirt floor to a, a nice home with even a stone wall around it. And I, I asked him, is that because of crime? Are you worried about crime? And he said, no, elephants. <laughs> <laughs> so Ele the different challenges we each have. But <laughs> In that part of the world, elephants are the rodents yeah. that are, are great, messing up their gardens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in terms of how this is exactly how these, these sourcing guiding principles work. I mean, this is, this is providing commitments. This is providing fair and on-time payments and prepayments and training. And it's a, it, it, changes lives for generations and it's 
incredibly meaningful, but it's a matter of, of trying to overcome the reluctancy or the, the, the fear that they might have of, because many a times they might've been burned in the past. Right. Um, some of these other ways, you know, other sourcing guiding principles and practice and an action, um, you know, of our eight, um, another really of our eight sourcing guiding principles, a great example is the amazing work our partners in Albania are doing with Helichrism. Um, they, they had a small operation at first. We partnered with them about four years ago. And since then, they are now working with hundreds of farmers in northern Albania. Um, most of these are women farmers, which is awesome, of course. And they are able to provide the same kind of services and training seedlings um, and then long-term commitments with contracts that they can give to the farmers because we give them we give our distiller partners the contracts and commitments to buy the oil our albania partner is now one of the most important industries in northern albania um, the prime minister went and visited their farm and the distillery just about a month ago because this is such uh, you know a huge impetus and growth for the company for the country um, this is also really exciting this year especially because their helichrism, this, the hard work that comes from Albania is part of our new helichrism touch that is being launched with uh, connection. And so we're excited to bring, you know, these years of work to, uh, you know, all of our customers now through this amazing new product with our helichrism touch. Vishnu, it's not just in developing worlds. Tell me uh, some other things that are going on with doTERRA and co-impact sourcing. Um, th there are a few, um, outstanding examples around the world and I would like to share our uh, peppermint uh, example from India. Um, of course we continue to uh, source from Willamette Valley uh, in Oregon our peppermint but we also source uh, from northern India uh, where uh, smallholder farmers are united in cooperatives and our uh, incredible uh, sourcing partner uh, who dis collects and distills those uh, peppermint and uh, provides uh, us. It is a great example of our sourcing guiding principle in action, generating and supporting much needed jobs in one of the most uh, impoverished uh, state in India. They are also focused on building and supporting small farmer cooperatives because of the benefits that they can collectively uh, receive from this model. Through this organization of the farmers, we are able to support now thousands of smallholder farmers in that part of the world. It's fantastic. And this is a, a great example of obviously our Peppermint oil from the Willamette Valley in Oregon is beautiful and amazing, um, and it you know meets our highest qualities. Uh, but we also have a chance and an opportunity to help the most by also meeting our high CPTG standards and quality needs through peppermint oil, but doing it in a place in the world where we can have a massive, meaningful impact. Tim, could you tell us a little bit about a supply chain that's focused on the environmental stewardship side of co-impact sourcing? Yeah, of course. Um, so under environmental stewardship, uh, an entity that some have heard of over the years is now our 100% owned, 100% doTERRA owned operation in New Zealand called Aotearoa. Um, this is for Douglas fir. Uh, this is such an awesome oil with its aroma and, and uses. It's one of my personal favorites, actually. Um, and it's not just an amazing oil by itself, but it's also where it comes from and, and how, we, how we get this, what all that goes into producing it. Um, Douglas fir in New Zealand is an invasive species. Um, and so through the initiative that's been, you know, set up there through our, our now general managers running Aotearoa, um, these two gentlemen had this vision years ago and it's been so wonderful to see all this come now um, full circle with, with what, how we're able to take that vision and, and now expand it even further of really turning what's a pest, uh, a problem through Douglas fir as an invasive species into a unique, beautiful product that doTERRA customers are the only ones in the world that get it. Um, 
uh, our Altera managers, you know, have been incorporating also in recent, uh, just this past year, a truly innovative program called Waste Wilderness um, that allows us to take all the Douglas fir biomass after it's been distilled, combine that with compost material and food waste and scraps from local restaurants and food production companies in the, in the Queenstown area, take old you know, wooden pallets used for shipping that are unused now and they create a compost base within the wooden pallets and plant native tree and native forest plants in this, in the square meter. You know, it's this, he's calling, they're calling it, you know, native species growing square meter by square meter. Yeah. And as you start this basic, uh, this, this transportable uh, square meter of, of native growing plants, we can then take these and plant these very easily into forest areas. So as we are removing the Douglas fir pest, turning it into a sustainable, beautiful essential oil, and then reusing full circle all of the waste products plus others and replanting now native growing plants back into the forest areas. And this is really a closed loop and a full circle method that we're going to be able to reforest uh, in our small way uh, New Zealand's biodiversity and helping to maintain their unique biodiversity there. And then, of course, you can always learn more about the sourcing guiding principles that we've been talking about today um, on source2u.com. New and updated and fresh content always lives there. And uh, we're, we love to nerd out on defining these things and developing a lot of frameworks and metrics for measurement. And we can share kind of the highlights in this setting, but please visit source you.com often. We, we really try to keep everyone updated there, but also share, you know, much more in terms of the, the scale and scope of the impact that we're, we're having around the world through these initiatives. And of course, through all of our amazing wellness advocates and customers that are really the, the way and means by all this to be accomplished um, without everyone playing their part in terms of education and teaching and training about the oils and, um, you know, using the products, being conscious consumers about being diligent about knowing where their oils and their products are coming from. Uh, it enables us to be able to um, have this impact through how we source our oils and to make meaningful change and to really, our goal is to eradicate poverty and to improve livelihoods around the world. And being able to do this through our supply chains is, is really something unprecedented and we hope it continues to be a model for other companies um, and really to be a standard for what we hope to accomplish. Uh, I've seen it firsthand and, and I'm so grateful for the work that you do for these people. Once you meet them, they're a part of your heart and your life forever. Uh, you know, you mentioned Albania. Uh, I was able to go back where Bulgaria honored doTERRA as the company of the year in Washington, D.C., and their ambassador and who's visited our site there because um, they felt that no company had done as much for the small farmers of Bulgaria, and that's happening across the world. And, and I just appreciate so much your, your, your life history and your devotion to this. And uh, I appreciate you being with us today to explain a little more about all the care and planning that goes into uh, how we source our oils and our collective devotion to the co-impact sourcing model where we are truly committed to sourcing the best and helping the most. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. There are now many places around the world where doTERRA's co-impact sourcing is affecting hundreds of thousands of lives. As our sourcing team travels to meet with these farmers, harvesters, and distillers, we send our video team along to capture some of these stories in these communities. The exclusive doTERRA series, Behind the Bottle, premiered last year. This series provides a look at the lives of the people and the communities impacted by our co-impact sourcing initiatives. You can now binge all 20 episodes of Behind the Bottle Season 1 in our Pursue 2020 bonus content section, as well as on the doTERRA corporate YouTube channel. Here are some highlights from Season 1. Behind every bottle of essential oil lies a story, one of personal growth, positive impact, and lasting change. Where the moral is always love, and the motivation 
is always to do good. Have you ever wondered where your bottle of essential oil comes from? Who it touches and impacts along the way? This is the story behind the story. This is behind the bottle. So here in Bihar, in northern India, on the border with not too far from Nepal. Um, we've been working here in Bihar for almost three years on a peppermint compact sourcing project. And this is the distillation facility that we donated through our great partner here called Farms and Farmers. And we're working to introduce peppermint into this area of Bihar. A lot of these farmers once produced mint years ago with the creation of synthetic carbon, they lost their market and lost their crop. So we're helping some new farmers as well as some old farmers that used to produce mint um, and tharvensis to introduce mint uh, peprida or peppermint here in, in Bihar. So we decided to do this particular location because around this area we have many villages that cultivate in small patches. So this is more of a centralized location that is convenient for multiple villages to kind of come in. Ideally within 24 hours they should get the product to the still to get the maximum yield. We have developed a unique model and mobile based technology which connects farmers to their entire agricultural requirements. So small farmers, small Indian farmers, they can get access to better agricultural input, they get access to better and customized crop advisory services, and lastly they can also sell their farm produce to better market and bigger uh, uh, buyers. And that's how basically you know, they experience more than 50% increment in their net income from agriculture. Farmer comes in and asks, I have a three acre piece of land, so what should I do with it? So we advise him, keep, based on your geography, based on your soil content, this is the right crop for your land, and this is the right time for sowing that crop. On day one, we start giving the right advisory. So right advisory reduces the price significantly and increases the profit margin. It's all about you know giving hope to the community. It's all about creating more prosperity to the farmer, to their family. We are hoping to continue to find out more practical solutions to these uh, social and economic problems in India. This is going to be a great opportunity for many to see that simple labor can change their life. Uh, this will make a greater impact in the area and I'm looking forward to many farmers joining this effort. doTERRA helps empower farmers, their families, and communities all over the world. We are committed to pursuing pure business practices in all we do, to source the best and help the most. But what we've talked about today is just the tip of the iceberg. Be sure to check out the exclusive Pursue 2020 bonus content section. We have in-depth interviews with some of our sourcing partners and team members, including our partners in Albania for the new Helichrism Touch as well as an exciting update with Dr. Osgothorpe on the Sanag Regional Hospital, benefiting the frankincense harvesting communities we work with in Somaliland. You can also take a closer look at our Indian peppermint sourcing and all that is happening in Brazil and our Comapac sourcing initiative for Copaiba. You won't want to miss seeing these bonus interviews and hearing these stories. Join us this afternoon as we dive deeper into Deep Blue and other products that help us find relief. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you soon.